everyone and welcome to today's lesson which is going to be a review for our um, essay question for the American Revolution exam um, and that essay question is going to be on the Declaration of Independence uh, it's very important when you take an essay based test that you know what the prompt is going to be and how you organize yourselves when it comes to responding to the prompt. Uh, a prompt is basically a multi-part essay question. So that is going to be the purpose of today's lesson. And so the first thing we need to do is look at the prompt itself. Our essay prompt is going to have multiple parts to it because that's what a prompt is. A prompt is a multiple part question that you are supposed to answer basically in paragraphs. So here is our question. What was the Declaration of Independence? What were the three sections of the Declaration? Why was the Declaration of Independence an important statement about the relationship between the government and the people, not just in America, but worldwide? So there are three parts of that. The first is what was the declaration itself. The second is what were the three parts. And the third is why was it important? So what that tells me is I'm going to be writing three paragraphs. So let's go ahead and focus on the first part of that. The first part of that is what was the Declaration of Independence? Well, there are four important points that it would be important for you to have in your essay if you're going to answer that question well. The first thing you need to know is that the Declaration of Independence is a document that officially declares that the United States of America is an independent country. We are breaking away from Great Britain. We are telling the King of England we are no longer loyal to you or attached to you and we are going to make our own way as a country in the world. Uh, you also need to know that the Declaration of Independence was written by Thomas Jefferson and it was approved by the Second Continental Congress. So the Second Continental Congress voted to declare independence. They tasked Thomas Jefferson with writing the Declaration of Independence. He did his writing, he did his editing, um, he submitted it to the Second Continental Congress and it was actually approved on July 4th, 1776, which is why we celebrate July 4th, 1776 as our Independence Day. Um, and it is important to know that the Declaration of Independence was an important statement, not just to the people of the United States, not just to the King of England, but it was an important statement to the world at large. If you have all of that in your first paragraph, you're going to have a very good first paragraph. So then the question becomes, what should you have in your second paragraph? The second part of the question is, what were the three sections of the Declaration? And this is the information I would like you to have in that paragraph. First of all, the three sections are called the preamble, the list of grievances, and the part where they actually declare independence. In the preamble, they basically make a statement of why the declaration is necessary. When in the course of human events, it becomes one necessary for one people to dissolve the bands that connect them with another and to assume upon the stations of the earth the separate but equal station to which the laws of God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinion of mankind requires that they should state what impels them to the separation. That's almost an exact quote. I missed a few words there, but basically it says, if you're going to break up with somebody, you owe them an explanation of why you're doing it. And that's what the preamble is. The second is a really, really long list of grievances of all the things the kid, the king, excuse me, and the British did to make the declaration necessary. And it's a long list. I showed it to you in class. It was dramatically read by a lot of actors from the 1990s. And um, some of those charges were a bit over the top, but some of them were, were pretty legit. Um, 
And whether they're legit or not, you know, when you're breaking up with somebody and you're giving them your reasons for doing that, if the reasons matter to you, that's all that matters. And the very final part of the declaration is where there's an official statement saying, we are becoming an independent country. We are breaking up with you as a result of becoming an independent country. We're going to do all the things that independent countries do, and you cannot stand in our way. And we are going to pledge to ourselves that we're going to follow through with this no matter what happens. And please keep in mind that all the people who wrote the declaration were basically risking their lives because if they failed, they were very likely to end up hanging from a tree. Um, and that's not a good scenario. So with that, let's go ahead and focus on the third and final paragraph. This one, in many ways, is the most important paragraph because it's one thing to state what the Declaration is. It's another thing to state why it was important. So the question is, why was the Declaration of Independence an important statement about the relationship between the government and the people, not just in America, but worldwide? Um, that's a very important question. First of all, the Declaration made a rather radical statement for the time that rights come from God, not from kings. Uh, this document was written in a world where most countries were monarchies. They were ruled by kings. And you could basically do whatever the king said you could do, and you could not do anything that the king said you couldn't do. And that's just how it was. The Declaration said, no, 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 no. When you're born, you're born with rights. Those rights don't come from the king. They don't come from the government. They come from God, and they cannot be taken away from you. And as a result of that, if government tries to take away those rights that come from God, the people, the citizens, have a right and a duty to change their government. That if government basically steps on your rights, the government is over the line and the government is no longer legitimate and it is your right and your duty to change the government. This is really the first time in world history anything like this had ever been said. It was a very, very radical idea. Uh, the men who wrote this, and they were all men, were considered to be radicals. And it was a direct threat to the governments of the world that um, basically were all monarchies at the time. So that's a big deal. Oops, let's go back there. Um, this was very threatening to the monarchies around the world because they were fearful that if this was successful in America, that the people worldwide would rise up and fight back against uh, the monarchies of the world. And 10 years later in France, that's basically what happened. So um, the King of England wanted to nip this in the bud so it didn't get going worldwide. And uh, so did a lot of other monarchs around the world. Uh, the exception to this would be France because the French were always competing with England. So if England's colonies were fighting against them, you know, it was in France's interest for them to succeed because that would make England weaker. And that's what ended up happening. And finally, the Declaration is considered the single most important document of stating the values upon which America is based when we are at our best. And that's not to say that everything in the Declaration is fantastic. I mean, it does talk about all men being created equal. And at the time, they meant all white landowning males. Uh, and these days, we interpret that as meaning all people. So how we look at that has evolved with time. There are also some rather disparaging things said about Native Americans in the Declaration of Independence, which are a little bit awkward to read uh, in today's world. But... Notwithstanding that, uh, if you get your head around the fact that this was a radical statement of values that threatened the world order as it existed at the time, you will get the gist of what you're supposed to know. So that's the essay prep. In terms of preparing for the multiple choice portion of the test, this right here is a rather brief summary of the things you're going to want to know uh, and have your head around factually. Um, and this is going to be reviewable more by using the Quizlet that I will post 
on Google Classroom, so I am not going to go over this in detail right now. But I will pause for a moment before I do the outro. And I am now doing the pause before the outro. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope this video is helpful in helping you prepare for your essay. I want you to be successful. This is a skill you're going to need to learn in high school, how to break down a prompt, how to prepare your answer ahead of time. And if this has done anything to help you with that, then I have done my job. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is once again Mr. Blumendahl signing off until next time on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube 